So I just finished up my guitar pick holder and I gotta get this mailed off to Alex who graduates tomorrow night. So I guess, I don't think he's gonna get this in time, <laughs> but I'm sure he'll like it when he, he gets it. Uh, this was a really fun project. It's just a bandsaw box is all it is, except instead of drawers, it's got uh, you know a lid on it. Uh, but let me show you a little bit more about this and how I think it can be improved. It took me a while to figure out how I wanted to do that uh, hinge on there. And I'd seen different ones before and usually they amount to like just a screw going in there or even a nail coming up from the other side or something like that. I didn't really want that and I didn't want it to show. Uh, so that's how I came up with the idea of using the little nut on there and it seems to be holding together really well One thing that happened was I put waxed paper under here while I was letting the glue dry and I couldn't get it out So there's still wax paper living under there but <laughs> I guess it's just always going to be there. I couldn't pick it all out. I couldn't <laughs> pick it all out yeah. One thing that I thought would be really cool to do, and I was thinking about doing it uh, to begin with, was putting this magnet on the other side. In other words, boring this hole from the back side and leaving just a thin layer of wood across the top so the magnet wouldn't even show at all. And the magnet is strong enough that it would still be able to hold. Now, the problem that I had with that is the exact same problem I had. Let me dump this out making putting this magnet in up here is that that wood is so thin you can still see where i've got a little bit of a hole there <laughs> that went through because here's my forstner bit and the the point on it right here you know still sticks up what like two millimeters or something like that so really what i would need is some sort of a forstner bit without the point but without the point, I'm not sure exactly how it would be centered. So uh, I don't know if you have an idea on how to make nice round, flat bottomed holes without that starting point, let me know, because I think that would be a real cool way to do this and nothing would show there at all. Thought I'd show you my funky old scroll saw. <laughs> So I've got it mounted to this same workbench that I have my lathe on that I showed you last week. Uh, I've got it over here in the back and I have the same motor that I use for my lathe. I just switch it out and put it on here. And all that is is I've just got this kind of a hokey setup of just a board with some legs on it that I pull out. I clamp that down and then I just clamp the motor to that and then it goes up to this wheel for the scroll saw and the whole thing I've just got plugged into uh, into a power strip. Uh, it's a craftsman scroll saw. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure my dad got this at the same time he got the lathe probably in the 1940s. Uh, so let me show you how it works. So it's got an Allen wrench right up in here for storage and so that comes down and is used, let me move the camera down, to loosen and tighten. There's an Allen wrench on this side and then a screw set on this side. I'm not exactly sure why they are both of them, but I noticed that I guess that's to kind of keep the blade sort of vertical. So anyways, I just pushed down here and grabbed the blade that way. I think I just tightened it a little bit much. And I loosen that and loosen <laughs> that up. Then it will just drop right down onto that blade. Okay, like that. Like that. Now the tricky part is I kind of have to hold it there with my finger and then I tighten this one up. Okay, a little bit, not all the way. Then I hold it there and then I tighten it with the Allen wrench this way. Tighten this one again. So it's kind of a pain to change these blades. You know, I'm, this is one of the reasons I don't use this saw very often because that's kind of hard. So then to just turn it on, I just uh, hit the switch. <laughs> It's also got this little thing here, you know, it's a, it's a hold down, I guess it holds your wood down, but I've never had much luck using that thing. Usually if I get it to where it holds the wood down nicely, it's too tight and I can't run the wood through it. And if it's too loose, then it really doesn't do me any good at all. And usually I forget to install this until after I've already put the blade on, so then I can't do it. So yeah, I just, I never use that thing. It's interesting though, this is Craftsman by King Sealy Corporation. I don't know why King Sealy 
actually is, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, it's also, this is underside. This has got a little lever here that you can loosen to tilt the table, you know, left and right. But I never have used that before. But I, again, I probably would if I used the scroll saw more. It's just that this scroll saw is, it's not like my lathe, which a lathe hasn't really changed much. Scroll saws, I think, have changed a lot since this thing was built, and so this one's kind of clunky and it's hard to use, so that's kind of why I don't use it very often. But there's certain times when it's really the only tool that can get the job done, like on these little this little box that I'm making here to cut out that centerpiece without using my bandsaw and having to have an entry point on there and then glue it back together. Uh, so, you know, I, I suppose I still need to use it occasionally, but I guess a lot of people who have scroll saws, that's kind of mainly what they do is scrolling, and they do lots of fancy scroll work, but to me, uh, my scroll saw is kind of like any other tool in my shop. I just kind of use it when the need arises.